Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. I am Miss Nur Fadila from Chemistry Today. So in this lecture, I will teach you chapter 2 atomic structure. So before we start, I am pleased to remind you to always have a lecture note together with you so that you can write down any extra note that I write on the slide. Okay, so let's start. This is an electromagnetic spectrum, as I have shown you in, the, in my first video. However, the things that I want to emphasize in this slide is that the spectrum, either visible, this visible light spectrum or the electromagnetic spectrum, is a range based on wavelength value. And as you know that the relationship between the energy and also the frequency and wavelength is that delta E, the energy change, is equals to H mu, which is the frequency, also equals to H time C over lambda. H is a constant. So as you can see here, the energy is directly proportional to mu, which is frequency. However, the energy is inversely proportional to wavelength. So, the spectrum is arranged according to the increasing wavelength from right, left to right. However, the energy is increased from right to left. So, these two is inversely proportional. And frequency, as it is directly proportional to energy, also increase from right to left. So what is a spectrum? So different source of light or radiation produce two types of spectrum, which are Continuous spectrum and line spectrum. So let's take a look at the continuous spectrum. So for continuous spectrum, the light source is actually a white light that coming from the incandescent light bulb. So if the white light is passed through the slit and then passed through a glass prism here, you can see a series of colors is seen. So white light is actually a combination of various colors. So different color, as you know in previous lesson, is represent different wavelength. So this spectrum consists of all wavelength of visible light. So this spectrum is called as continuous spectrum. Meanwhile, for the line spectrum, the light source is actually coming from this discharge tube. The discharge tube here, inside this, contain a particular element, for example, hydrogen element or hydrogen gas. So when a high voltage is supplied to the discharge tube as a source of energy, so the light is produced from the discharge tube, is passed through the slit and then passed through the prism, a series of lines is produced. So each line is correct correspond to a light of a particular wavelength value. So a line spectrum is a series of discrete. Discrete means definite lines with a certain wavelength value. So the series of wavelength produced this way is called an atomic emission spectrum. So here is the compa uh, comparison between the continuous spectrum that consists of all wavelengths of of the visible light and here are the example of the line spectrum of several elements for example sodium element hydrogen calcium and mercury so each element has their own unique line spectrum that can be used to identify the element. Just like a person can be identified using their unique thumbprint, so this like line spectrum can function as a thumbprint to identify this element. So here, is the difference between the continuous spectrum and the line spectrum. So for continuous spectrum, a spectrum that consists of all wavelengths in the visible region, while for the line spectrum, 
it is a, it is a spectrum of radiation that consists of a discrete line with a specific wavelength value. So for continuous spectrum, it has no discrete line that separate the colors. However, each color merge into the next without a break. Okay, for line spectrum, it has a discrete lines and each line is separated by a black area or a black space. The sources for the continuous spectrum is a sunlight and the light that coming from the incandescent light bulb. For line spectrum, the energy, the light source is light of discharge tube of elements such as hydrogen, sodium element, etc.